If you find this segment informative, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your support helps us keep you informed. Help us get our first 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, sharing, and subscribing to our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts our visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find ways to stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being part of our community and for supporting quality journalism. Good morning, Davao, Mindanao, North, South, East, and West. This is Elijah Hilcacho, your newscaster for today. Before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. For the headlines, weather forecast, trough of super typhoon YAGI formerly Yagi or formerly Enteng affecting extreme of northern Luzon, southwest monsoon affecting the rest of the Luzon. Local news, police hunt down suspects in Salumay Barangay Cap Ambush Tri. 200k Dabawenos to receive cash aid in Bagong Pilipinas Servicio Fair. Hostage takers die allegedly after shooting it out with police. OFWs urge to register with DMW for safety support. National News CA declares pro protection order issued by Devil Court for KOJC null and void. Freeze assets at Pogo site. International News New details emerge but the 14-year-old suspect and victims in the deadliest school shooting this year. Takeaways from Donald Trump election interferes, Trump's election interference court hearing. Entertainment news. A timeline of Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey's Kelsey's touchdown romance. Michael Keaton would like to use his birth name, Michael Douglas, but two things stand in a way. Sports news. Uganda Olympic Rebecca Chiptegi dies after being set on fire by boyfriend. U.S. soccer legend Alex Morgan announced retirement for the sport. Featured stories Davao City's best adobo and New York's best pastrami. Trivia Did you know that the Philippine national sports is Arnis? Weather forecast. Threat of Super Typhoon Yagi formerly Enteng affecting extreme of northern Luzon, southwest monsoon affecting the rest of Luzon. Batanes and Babuyan Islands will have cloudy skies with scattered rain and thunderstorms due to the threat of Super Typhoon, with flush floods and landslides possible in Pangasinan, Zambales, and Bataan. Extreme monsoon rains from the southwest monsoon posing risk of floods, flooding, and landslides. Metro Manila parts of Luzon and Mindoro will experience occasional rains from the monsoon 
and the possible flash floods in Palawan, Quezon, and nearby areas with sea scattered rains, while the rest of the country will localize thunderstorms. Local news Police hunt down suspects in Salumay Barangay Cop Ambush Tribe. A manhunt is underway in Marilog District after the two suspects ambushed the barangay captain of Salumay, Davao City, and its his wife on Tuesday morning, September 3, 2024. The victims, Lito Mansamo and his wife, Alma, were attacked while traveling in their pickup near Porok 1 Barangay Salumay. Alma was shot in the knee but Lito was unharmed. The suspects, armed with an M16 rifle and 19mm pistol, escaped on foot. Authorities responded promptly and Marilog Police Station is actively investigating the case to apprehend the suspects. 200k Dabawenos to receive cash aid in Bagong Pilipinas Servicio Fair. Around 1 billion pesos in cash aid will be distributed to 200,000 beneficiaries in Davao City through the Bagong Pilipinas Servicio Fair or BPSF. Mindanao Development Authorities or MINDA Secretary Leo Magno announced his this during a press conference of September 4, 2024. Uh, the beneficiaries of 150,000 will receive cash assistance under the Ayuda para sa Kapos at Kita program or ACAP and 50,000 through the Tulong Panghanap Buhay sa ating Disadvantaged Displaced Workers or Tupad. The event featuring 38 government agencies offering various services will take place on September 5 to 6 at Yusef Obrero, Davao City. Hostage taker dies allegedly after shooting it out with police. A hostage taking incident at a gasoline station by on Bypass Road in Barangay Catalunan Pequeño, Davao City ended in a shout out on September 4, 2024. The suspect, identified as alias Sator, resisted police negotiation and opened fire, prompting authorities, including the SWAT team, to retaliate. The suspect was hit on later died in the hospital. A resident, Ian Regner, 24, was injured after being stalked by the suspect motorcycle, but he is now in stable condition. The police responded quickly to the scene after receiving reports of the alleged hostage taking earlier that day. OFW is urged to register with M. DMW for safety. Overseas Filipino workers or OFWs are urged to register with the Department of Migrant Workers or DMW for improved monitoring and support. At the Kapihan ba sa Bagong Pilipinas event on September 4, 2024, DMW Davao Director Angela Librado Trinidad stressed that the registration ensures safety. More organized migration. In 2024, the DMW handled over 12,669 cases, a significant rise from previous years. Their safety migration campaign aims to protect OFWs from risk. Davao del Sur led in OFW development with household workers, teachers, and nurses among the top jobs mostly destined for the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait. National News CA declares protections order issued by the Davao Court for KOJC null and void. The Court of Appeals or CA in Cagayan de Oro has voided the Temporary Protection Order or TPO 
issued by the Davao Court in favor of Kingdom of Jesus Christ or KOJC. Leader Pastor Apollo Kibuloy, the CA ruled that the Davao Court acted without authority in handling the Amparo case, nullifying the TPO issued in August 27. Despite this, Davao Police continued operation at the KOJC compound, seeking to arrest Kibuloy on charges including human trafficking. The police removed barriers but maintained their search within 30 hectare property. Freeze assets at Pogo site. The Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Commission or PAOCC has directed the Anti-Money Laundering Council or AMLC to freeze assets linked to a illegal Philippine offshore gaming operator or Pogo Hub raided in Lapu-Lapu City. The order signed by Executive Secretary Lucas Bersamin target, targets 13 buildings and 12 vehicles connected to the illegal operation. The raid on August 31st rescued Indonesian nationals allegedly held against their will and led to the arrest of 169 foreigners. Ongoing investigations are gathered further in evidence to support human trafficking and money laundering charges against the suspects involved. International News New detail emerge about the 14-year-old suspect and victims in the deadliest school shooting this year. Just weeks into the new school year, Appalachian High School in Winder, Georgia, become the sense of the tragic mass, mass shooting. A 14-year-old student allegedly used an AR platform weapon to kill four people, two students and two teachers, making it the deadliest school shooting in the U.S. since March 2023. Incident at the Covenant School in Nashville, this shooting marks a 45th school shooting of the year. Additionally, nine other were hospitalized because of the attack. Takeaways from Donald Trump's election interfer interference court hearing. At a federal hearing in Donald Trump's election subversions, subversion case, Job Tanya Chutkan reviewed her approach without finalizing a schedule. She was skeptical of Trump's request to prioritize immunity issues related to former Vice President Mike Pence. Chutkan, Chutkan stressed she would set a scheduling order soon, potentially affecting the November election timeline. Trump's team expressed concern about how the timing of filing might impact the election, but Chutkan dismissed this as irrelevant. Chutkan also indicated it was premature to set a trial due date due to the pending immunity issues and potential appeals. She criticized a recent Florida ruling on a related case. Entertainment News A Timeline of Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey's Touchdown Romance Travis Kells and Taylor Swift's romance is entering the second season of football. The term football Taylor Swift version emerged after Taylor Swift attended a Kansas City Chiefs game in September 2023. The watch kills amid romance rumors. It's unclear if Swift will be at the season opening game. But if she is, she might appear on broadcast. During if off season, the couple has stayed active 
with Swift even creating plays for the Chiefs that might be used in the upcoming games. Michael Keaton would like to use his birth name Michael Douglas but two things stand in a way. Michael Keaton born Michael Douglas choose his professional name after considering alternatives due to Screen Actors Guild rules prohibiting name duplication. He recalled the process as being somewhat random, saying he picked Keaton from the phone book of similar source because it seemed reasonable. Although he intended to use Michael Keaton Douglas for his recent film, Knox Goes Away, he forgot to finalize the change. His latest project, the sequel, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, credits him Michael Keaton. Sports News Uganda Olympic Rebecca Chip Tiggy dies after being set on fire by boyfriend. Rebecca Cheptigi, a Uganda marathon runner who competed in the Paris Olympics, has died after being burned by her boyfriend, Dixon Dima. The Uganda Athletics Federation confirmed her death condemning the domestic violence and calling for justice. Cheptige, 33, who live in Kenya, suffered burns of her, over 75% of her body following an attack in her home. The Kenya Olympic team and IOC President Thomas Back expressed shock and sorrow, noting her Olympic participation was inspiring. Dima, who attacked her over and land dispute, is hospitalized in Eldoret with burns. U.S. scorer legend Alex Morgan announced retirement from the sport. Alex Morgan, a re-owned scorer, star, and striker for the NWSL's San Diego Wave, announced her retirement from professional soccer. In an emotional video, the 35-year-old revealed her final watch will be is this weekend against the North Carolina Courage and shared that she is expecting her second child. Morgan, a two-time world champ, two-time World Cup champion and Olympic gold medalist, reflected on her 30-year career expressing pride in her impact on the sport and its future. She scored 129 goals for the U.S. Women's National Team, ranked fifth on their all-time list. Featured Stories In Davao City, Adobo, a Filipino staple featured marinated meat, often chicken or pork, slow cook in the vinegar, soy sauce, and spice. Sinigang is tangy, sour soup made with tamarind and mixed with meats and vegetables. For a culinary adventure in New York, try to mouth-watering pastrami on a re from Katz Delicatessen. The re pizza slice from Joe's Pizza or the delicate dumplings from the Xi'an Famous Foods. Don't miss the classic bagels from the Rose and Daughters or indulgent cheesecake from Juniors. Did you know that the Philippines national sport is Arnis? Did you know that it is the most popular and the national sport is Arnis? Also known as Excrema or Cali. 
This martial art emphasizes strike fighting, knife technique, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Officially recognized as the national martial art and sport in 20, 2009, Arnish, Arnish showcases the country's deep traditional in self-defense and combat skills. That is all for our news for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Once again, my name is Elijah. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Good morning, Dama. If you find this segment informative, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your support helps us keep you informed. Help us get our first 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, sharing, and subscribing to our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts our visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find ways to stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being part of our community and for supporting quality journalism.